this is uh, I'm very excited to talk with you. Like wh- when we started this like four and a half years ago, <laughs> I know it's like one of the it's like the it's like the Meat Love song, right? In Meat Love, he says, "I bet you say that to all the boys." In one of the songs, I and I'm being totally honest. Like you're one of those people that I, I think it's just the movies that you're in are such a touchstone in my childhood based on my age. I was born in 86. So like, even though Pee Wee came out before then and Team Wolf came out right around that time and Team Wolf 2 and Leprechaun, those are all movies that I watched on cable so much as a kid. So this is definitely an honor. But I one thing I didn't know about you, obviously I could look at IMDb all day long. It's really like, how did it all begin? So you grew up in Oklahoma, right? Yes, I did. I grew up in uh, a little town south of Tulsa that I'm in right now. And um, I, I moved here when I was like three and a half. So most of my memories are here. Graduated from high school, went to uh, a university in Tahlequah, Oklahoma on a, a little scholarship. And then um, okay. then hit the road and did a little uh, non-union dinner theater and a uh, little outdoor drama and I decided I either had to go east or west. So I went, I went yeah. west. <laughs> where, where did it stem as a child? Like, what was it that got you? How'd you catch the acting bug? Um, it was my uh, freshman year in high school. I was trying to get a, a grade up uh, from nowhere. <laughs> and uh, it, one of the ways to get uh, extra points were. Well, the only way to get extra points uh, at this stage was to enter an intramural uh, <laughs> public speaking contest. And uh, I, I did it in character as uh, pretty much as George C. Scott playing Patton. And uh, nice. it just laced with profanities and, and somehow it squeaked by because it was an historical <laughs> movie. Uh, and I, I somehow managed not to be lashed with the buckle on the Bible belt. I was not sent home. My parents were not called. It was uh, it was maybe the first divine intervention in my uh, on my road to uh, to uh, find my calling. Yeah, it's so funny how many people have those stories that I interview that it's almost like an accidental start to the business. Like yeah. Robert Hayes, he he moved in between like semesters in college. His dad was in the military, and when he moved. The, uh, like he went to go enroll and it was like a day before classes were starting. So there was like nothing that he wanted. So he had to take acting and then the rest is history. And there's so many people like that story, right? It's wild. Well, well that happens to actors too. We ended up in, we ended up yeah. in, cl- in ca- classes we don't want to be in too, like journalism, you know, but uh, <laughs> not, not, in small town, not in a small town college in Oklahoma in the, in the seventies, you know, You don't want to have to sit through journalism class. So, yeah. So what were some of the, were some of the places you did like the non-union dinner theater, like in Oklahoma or was like a traveling company you're in? It was, it was a small uh, company uh, that was based out of Nashville that did Johnson city, um, Kingsport area, Evansville, Indiana, Memphis, and Tulsa was on the circuit and they stopped it of course, right when they hired me. Uh, and, uh, and in Nashville. So we would, we would do that, that tour, um, and play uh, a week or two, uh, at, at every, you know, uh, location. And then we'd, uh, go into rehearsal for another play. And, uh, that was uh, a very strange existence. <laughs> so how, how did that next leap happen from non-union dinner theater to like, it looks like your first credit was Webster. Did someone notice you, an agent, or did you just head out west on your own? Well, I, 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 I knew I had to make a, a decision whether or not I was going to go uh, the route of uh, uh, seeking Broadway or uh, getting in the film business. And I had been to New York, and I knew uh, – this was not going to be a good fit for me psychologically coming to a town of about 12,000 people uh, and a university town, not much bigger. And I thought, you know what? I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about the days walking through Manhattan in a white shirt with the, you know, ash falling on me, you know, and the, and the smells and all the people and the attitudes. And I thought, 
why would why would I do that? You know, because it would be like yeah. astro. I have to get rid of a car because I couldn't even afford to park a car. So I thought, no, you know, <laughs> I, it would be better to rub bumpers than elbows. So I I just yeah. had never been to the West Coast, and had a, a friend of a, a college friend that uh, said, yeah, have him, have him come stay with us. Cool. No, uh, you know, we'll we'll tell him uh, what, where where are the safe areas and and where uh, are, you know, areas not to look or, or even go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's helpful. Yeah, and and uh, it just so happened that he was married to a uh, assistant casting uh, agent uh, at Paramount. So, at some point. Uh, after I had moved out or whatever, I wasn't there I, just a couple of, of weeks, not long enough to become a pest. Uh, yeah. Until I found an apartment, but uh, uh, you know, she she had to read with all these people, and so that's people all day long, the same scene over and over and over until you have gone through every one of the candidates for that character. So she said, "You want to do this?" And I said, "Yeah." <laughs> on the Paramount lot, read against these people, and you know I'm reading against people or, or with people uh, that that you know I was I was like I know who that is I know who that is <laughs> oh, I better be good so um, you know I, I I had that luxury and then uh, she got um, attached to uh, casting uh, Webster yes. and she had me in on that. And that was for uh, the uh, the cast cast, not just incidental characters. And I got to read with all those people. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, people you may not know their names, but you see them and you go, oh, God, yeah, I know who that guy was in blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I got to read with all these people. And I, I guess I held my own with everybody. And, and they liked me and thought I, I was funny. And um, at, at the end of the run, they said, well, Mark, um, you need your SAG card, don't you? And I said, yeah. They said, okay, we're going to, we're going to write you into the, uh, the, the last uh, episode of the season. Wow. You know, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, you know, and, and then it just, uh, it's, it's just been that way all my life. Somebody's looking over my soldier, shoulder, uh, taking care of me, uh, you know, even in, in the rotten times or whatever, but, uh, you know, it's it's hard not to feel that, that, that it was my calling. You know, when you put yeah. everything together, and 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 and, it, and I still feel that way. I feel like uh, acting is my calling, and I just need to figure out uh, where I need to go next. Because uh, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm I'm follow, uh, I'm following the the boss up there now a lot more than I used to. So he'll get yeah. me where I need to be. <laughs> get me where he wants me. That's all I care. Yeah, yeah. So, so Webster, you got your side card. That's so cool that people were looking out for you, and obviously, people liked you enough or what you were doing uh, while on set. So, from there, what what came first? Was it Teen Wolf? Was it Pee Wee's Big Adventure? Stooge Mania? Because they all came out in '85. It well, it, it's it's chicken and the egg time here. Uh, you know, because yeah, yeah. You 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 shoot something and you forget about it. You go on to another project. And by the time it's it has been edited and scored and everything comes out, uh, you know you you have a lapse between it was shot in '84 and it you know it actually in the books it's just a, it's a 1985 film. So yeah, yeah. they were they were uh, those two anyway were were pretty close together um, <clears throat> as far as uh, when I shot them, and they just happened to come out uh, together. You know, which was was no yeah. no accident, you know, because uh, <laughs> uh, Michael J. Fox was in uh, Back to the Future, so we had yeah. Back that's to what I was gonna say. That's what I was thinking. That was first because I remember they held that for a little bit because they saw the success with Michael and that. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's a big year for you. Those are two like cult, yeah, you know, huge movies. Yeah, they they and they you know they were they stayed huge movies through your childhood and 
<laughs> and uh, a lot of other people's childhood. I mean, I, I, it, I, just, I can't even estimate anymore. Some families, it's like four generations deep, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, grandparent to parent, parent to child, child to child. And, <laughs> and so it's crazy. Um, yeah, I, and it's I, funny that the, those movies that you were in with those, especially Team Wolf, Team Wolf 2, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, that's like the big Paul Rubens, obviously. That's the one that I know he was in Cheech and Chong before that, but that was like the, the burst of his character, Pee Wee on the scene, yeah. and then Michael J. Fox, Teen Wolf, and then you got Jason Bateman for Team Wolf 2. Do you remember, like, obviously at that point, that's that's huge, those movies for you in 85 that's a big jump from just being like on Webster to pretty important roles. Yeah. But, but I, I had no idea how they were going to turn out when I was, when I was shooting. That's true, yeah. I did, had no, no idea. Uh, you know, I, it, it, there were just too many, you know, things in it's in their infancy and I couldn't see the future, you know, because then you either went to the movie to, to the movies to see it, you rented it or you bought it. No cable yet. Not, you know, Broad, no. you know, broadly through, uh, and uh, it, it's it's just it seems like a galaxy far, far away, um, and you you know you can't look into the future. So I didn't know what I, I didn't know uh, till decades later exactly how synchronicity had played out in my career, in my life, and uh, and then you know shooting into the nineties and the two thousands or whatever with Leprechaun, and uh, yeah. And Gacy, and it, it just you know, and a league of their own. And I just kept, you know, finding uh, things that, that came out at the right time. Uh, even just just you know some of the little bitty things that I I did like uh, Naked Gun with uh, Hey it's Enrico Palazzo. I know, yeah. Um, you know, I just you know I, I I showed up. I spent a half a day. I was in you know with with the uh, the crowds. And um, and that was it. And I left and, you know, cut my line in. But uh, and forgot about the movie. I don't think they even I don't think I even uh, was far enough up on the food chain yet <laughs> uh, to where they invited <laughs> me. I don't remember going to a, a premiere. Uh, so I, I, I didn't even know the movie had come out. And I guess it had premiered uh, in the. Uh, in the, a, a few days, you know, whenever it came out in the L.A. area, and I'm walking down either Sunset or Hollywood Boulevard, and this guy pulls over, rolls down the window on the passenger side and goes, Hey, it's Enrico Palazzo! Hey, you <laughs> brother! And I'm going, What the hell just happened? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, okay, cool. Um, but... Um, that, that's it's just amazing that the uh, that that's just become uh, part of the English language, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I bet that happened a lot. Like for I, but well, like when Pee Wee came out, I'm sure you got recognized and people called you Francis. No, um, it was hit and miss. I, I kind of uh, yeah. I I I didn't uh, uh, dress to impress. Let's say you know. Yeah, <laughs> I probably true. had an, an unarmed ironed uh, shirt from. Uh, Walmart, you know, <laughs> and no monogram pajamas. Growing, you, know. you weren't wearing your monogram pajamas around. No, no, no. I, you know, <laughs> if, if, if I didn't have an audition that day, there was no reason to shave. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, unless I, I was doing a, a clerical work, which was a lot of fun. Not, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it was just weird. And, and, uh, you know, I, I look back and I'm going, my God, you know, people say, how do I do it? How do I get into the business? How do I do this? How do I do that? And I'm going, look at the technology you had. Look at the technology you have in your hand. You got a phone in your hand. Look at, yeah. you have a supercomputer. You have all these apps. Um, it, you know, you, you don't have to be in a, uh, a bed bug infested dumped is somewhere in Hollywood beating on <laughs> doors and, and slipping around in hobo shit. You don't have to do that anymore. If they want to yeah. talk to you, you can find them. You can find them through the internet and they can find you. So it's changed the game completely from, uh, you know, just to tell you how much it's changed. Uh, I didn't have an answering machine when I moved to LA. Oh, and, I bet. Yeah. 
And uh, I know that this for a fact that Mike Fox, when he first got to LA, he didn't have one either. And he got an agent somehow. I think he had an agent before he moved down here because he had some uh, creds in, uh, in Canada. And there was a, uh, a pioneer chicken on the corner with a phone booth. And that was the number he gave to his agent. So he would go there in the morning and just sit there, you know, and, and count his pennies out and get another cup of coffee or a Coke and wait for that phone to ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome well you know it, you, you can't you get well, oh uh, Michael T. Fox he never he never paid his dues both <laughs> you know yeah. come on <laughs> well you're right about those two projects when you think about Teen Wolf because I think that was shot pretty quick and there was some I don't know whatever but but that and then Pee Wee because that was Tim Bur Burton's first feature I talked to David L. Snyder who did the art he was the art director on that, on Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So I think it was like one of those, like, hey, we don't know how this is going to be. Oh, oh no. no. Nobody knew. I I, I had seen, uh, I hadn't seen Paul's HBO special. I didn't know how brilliant he was. Um, I had seen him on Letterman. That was it. And I'm going, wow, this character is off the hook. <laughs> and that that was pretty much all I knew. I hadn't I didn't even know Frank and Weenie existed, so I didn't know who the hell Tim Burton was. So it was just um you know, I I had no idea. I'm you know, I'm going in doing my job and and as we're shooting, you know, it finally dawned on me what these guys were doing and what you know, I started seeing the sets and uh and the rewrites or whatever and and it was like this is going to be, I don't know how big it'll be. <laughs> There's some funny shit going on here. You know, that's, all, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, yeah. So yeah, the Alamo, the, the interactions with you and him, I know you are, but what am I like, no, it's just such a memorable movie and your character, your interaction with him and even Teen Wolf, like just, uh, you know, chubby, your character, you know, th my favorite part is that end scene and you hit the shot. What he says, great. Doesn't he say, uh, the guy from the dragon says, go ahead, shoot it, fat boy, or something? And you yeah. hit the shot. And then the, I think that's what cues the music. Uh, that, that, uh, not when in the is it when in the end or shoot for the moon? One of those ending songs from that movie. It starts the song right there. You hear the doom, 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 come in. I love that end of the movie. I watch it often. Yeah. I, I, I think Mark, uh, the, the villain in that was, uh, just perfect. And, oh, yeah. and, and the yeah. shot on his face, you know, uh, when he's he's waiting for the miss or whatever, it doesn't happen. And he just stands there and closes his eyes like in shame and defeat is like, yes, that's what I want to see. You know, so uh, I guess he's still he, he is uh, moved to, to England and, and is very happy living in, in England. I don't know if, if he's doing television or theater or, or whatever, but, uh, you know, maybe. When, when these days I can find him in a pub in London. <laughs> at yeah, the, maybe. Uh, yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Troy Evans was the coach of the Dragons. I'm sorry, say He's that. A big time. Oh, actor uh, Troy Evans was the. He had a small part oh, as yeah, the yeah, yeah. coach of the Dragons. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was like, uh, I, you know, I, it's like as the as the years went going by, I'm going, my God, Troy is. He's getting some traction. <laughs> My God, Troy's yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And then I run into him in an audition. Ace Ventura. And it was like, Man, you are killing me. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, Bosch. I talked to him a few years ago, and I loved him on Bosch, and I loved him Ace Ventura. But it's true. I didn't even remember him because he looks so different. Because he has like the, he's kind of like a, you know, the jacket on yeah. and kind of like slick back hair. But your coach, the guy who played your coach, Paul Sands, was in the in the sequel. The original was Paul. I forget his last name, but. He was super funny. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. Here we go. See, I don't have cheat sheets. This is unfair. I'll, I'll look um, it up. I'll look it up because he's right here. But, no, it, he's, like, so great. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and a very uh, successful producer as well. Oh, Jay Tarsus. That's what it is. Jay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. yeah. Jay Tarsus. Well, and, and he was so subtle, and all this stuff was so zoned in. And I'm standing so far back when I'm watching him work, I'm going – 
I don't, I don't know if this guy's character is going to work. I'm just, he's not making me laugh 40 feet. You know, he's not making, making me laugh 30. And then when I saw it on film, I'm like, you know, this guy executed this role flawlessly as far as <laughs> Complaining about the, the reason you guys were losing was because uh, you don't have the shoes of the other team. <laughs> That was one of his excuses to the principal, but it was so good. Like James Hampton, like uh, Susan Boof is like so great in that movie. Jerry Levine, who's a Jersey guy too. Yeah. So much, man. Yeah. So many good people in that movie. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, a, a nice little uh, combination, the right place at the right time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Doug. Um, oh, he's a Doug too. What's his name? He went on to do uh, some pretty big movies, uh, but he was he was from Teen Wolf, huh? He was in Teen Wolf. Yes, um, he was. He's one of the Beavers. Um, Shade, I got my cheat cheat sheet here. Okay, use your cheat sheet. What, what, what does the cheat sheet say? For Doug, let's find Doug. 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 Oh, he's not in the main, so maybe he was. Uh, he let's find his character. Yeah. His real name's Doug. Yeah. Got it. Doug Savant. He played Brad. Yes. yes thank you very much. He, he went on to do stuff. Uh, some some pretty. Oh my god. Stuff. He's in Teen Wolf. Yeah. I never realized he was in. Uh, he was on. My wife loved uh, Desperate Housewives. He was on Desperate yeah. Housewives for, for the whole run of it. Wow. Yeah. He went, and Sometimes you, know, you don't realize in movies talking. like who plays those little behind the scene parts. Yeah. Uh, well, you look at you look at Paul Rubens' film filmography, and it's it's stunning that even if he hadn't played Pee Wee Herman, his his uh, filmography is is uh, is is crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, he, he he wasn't just a comedic genius. He wasn't just a comedic actor. He was just a Damn good actor, um, and I don't think it might. He minded a bit, <laughs> you know, uh, settling into uh, his his Pee Wee fandom, stardom, kingdom, whatever. Um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's happened to you know a lot of people. You, you'll go back and there was uh, somebody. I was watching the Chosen episodes, and I. I, uh, later on, uh, went, uh, to, uh, Instagram and they're showing these horrible movie clips from horror films, really cheesy. Okay. Stuff. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm going, Oh my God, that's, that's like Nicodemus. One of the like main characters that I'm going, Whoa, I'm <laughs> <come> a long <laughs> way. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, you got to start somewhere. No, it's so funny that you watch a lot of movies, especially when like I'm looking at IMDb's and I'm getting ready to talk to somebody or we're like reviewing a movie and you look at all these and you're like, wow, that, you know, because people got to start somewhere. William Sadler told me he started uh, as man who fell downstairs. I think that's one of his first uh, credits in some movie in the early eighties. I, I had a, a, a buddy that uh, used to come work out at LA connection uh, we, 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 it was a, it was a group that did improvisational comedy and, oh, uh, cool. and he, he would make up fake resumes just, just to, to get laughs from the casting directors that would never bring him in. And, uh, a couple of them were, uh, Jaws, the little Stebbins boy, which was you never <laughs> seen. He was eaten by the shark, right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it would just be ridiculous stuff. Uh, you know, like uh, a character, <laughs> A dead character in something that you never saw, but it was a big <laughs> film, you know. Gone with the Wind, baby, you know, just <laughs> stupid funny. shit like that. And I thought, well, you know, it's worth a shot, you know. And, yeah, and, and you know, I had funny. people that they, the one guy that made up a card with this phony list on it, they would hand out to people, and it said farewell performances only. So every, <laughs> every time I saw him, I said, is is this the one? <laughs> And he goes, well, get close. Yeah. <laughs> Might have to move back and, you know, go to work in the grocery store. Uh, and yeah, it's like bands go on their farewell tour and they're on like their seventh farewell tour. <laughs> yeah. The farewell tour <laughs> is back. 
<laughs> bigger than ever. The biggest farewell you'll ever see with rocket firing guitars. <laughs> So yes, yes, we talked a little bit about Team Wolf too, but I talked to Stuart, and I know you guys did that reunion like last year. I think it was you guys all connected for the first time in a while. You, Stuart, and uh, what's her name, the main girl? Uh, it wasn't Kim Darby, obviously. Who was I, it? The I, I wasn't invited to that, or I didn't attend. I I didn't go to. Oh, okay. That reunion. I say Chandler. That's who I was but, talking uh, about. Uh, now the the the, uh, the first one with uh, Levine as uh, in in that playing that character or whatever. Now there was one and it was hosted by Boof and her husband. Uh, oh, that's cool styles, yeah. And they had a they had a nice uh, a little two way camera set up in a room to where we could go in and talk to Mikey because he couldn't be there. Um, yeah, which was understandable, uh, you know, definitely at the time. But uh, no, I missed I missed that one with uh, you know we're on to Team Wolf two now. I I, I think um, I think the the actor that replaced Styles it had to be him, you know. Yeah. But, but he, he, yeah. He, he wasn't playing Styles. He was playing Styles' cousin, and it worked for me. Uh, yeah. For a lot of people, but I, I I think a lot of people were under the false impression that he was supposed to be Styles. No, he was a different character. Which I, yeah. I think pissed him off to no end, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but you know he he um, he was so much fun to work with, such a funny guy, and and he had a really nice career after that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and he told me uh, that he was disappointed when he saw the final <laughs> cut because there was a lot of scenes that you guys shot with yeah. Jason like that were because if when you watch the movie he's like isn't it kind of confusing when you watch it and when he mentioned it, it made sense to me it goes from him saying i don't want to really be the wolf and then he's full wolf so there was like that in between he said there was a bunch of scenes of you guys like i don't know if it was at a mall or like these different sequences that you yeah. guys shot that just never made it into the movie yeah well i uh i i try not to bring up things like that unless you know there was uh, but I understand his frustration, um, and uh, and there's there's nothing we can do about it now. So onward and upward. Yeah, no, I know. There's a lot of things when it comes to like m movies that like editors cut, directors cut, even like Kim Darby's character being a wolf. <laughs> that was like that's such a wild thing to to have that in the last scene. But it was cool. Like John a John Aston was so great to have in the movie. But the whole scene, you're like. She's a wolf this whole time. Yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Uh, and uh, <laughs> being a child of the of the of the seventies or whatever, you know, that's uh, I, I graduated in nineteen seventy six, so it was I think it was state law that you had to watch True Grid at least three times a year, or they they put you in prison. And and yeah. you know, faithfully, you know, I I so when I found out that that I'd be working with her, I'm going, wow, this. You know this. This is a big deal for me because she, you know, she was part of, you know, a, a movie that uh, was just, you know, uh, something that that was in my favorites. You know, so that was yeah. pretty neat. And then you know, John Aston, and I'm going, oh my god, well, you know, from television, um, and, and the movies he appeared in. So it was it was really kind of, uh, you know, uh, just a, a real treat just to be. You know, hanging out with those people and, and going to get a coffee and a cookie and talking to people. And, you know, nobody yeah. had, you know, a, a stock up their ass or anything like that. Everybody was very nice to one another. Everybody got along. And um, it was it was just it was just a nice little chemistry. Um, and I got away with murder. <laughs> uh, Chris <laughs> Leach just said, oh, whatever, just, you know, be silly. And so I was, I was, I was ridiculously silly. And, uh, yeah. you know, there were, there were a lot of face palms when it came out. And I'm like, oh boy, did I, did I really, <laughs> I just, I'm, you know, it, but, but it, what the hell it's Teen Wolf, right? You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. No. It, yeah. It's, they turned a movie that was like a team sport and they chose the boxing aspect of it. And I don't know if they would allow one boxer to fight every, anyone, like every person on the other team, but it's a movie, you know, it's silly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it, that, that actually, 
helped my image as a sports professional because uh, you know I have been paid, so I'm a professional, to box, to fence, to play basketball, and to hang around at baseball fields. So, you got yeah. it all covered. Still waiting on you, that. You cover. You cover it all. Still waiting on the hockey movie. movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's out there. I know it. I can smell it. Uh, maybe they'll do another season of that Mighty Ducks reboot they did with uh, Emilio. Maybe they'll do that, and they can uh, bring you in for it, so you can cover all your bases, uh, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> well, you know, I, maybe I should just be happy with what I have and shut up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, did you always make a point to see yourself in the movie? Like, would you go to the theater, like for like Pee Wee or Teen Wolf when it came out in the theater? Did you like say, "I got to go see this to like watch yourself"? Um, if it was, uh, you know, like a, a a screening for the cast and crew, sure, I you know felt obligated to do that. Um, yeah, but um, <clears throat> um trying to think uh, well that was pretty much the only way to to check on the job you did that's what i mean yeah but uh uh you know i i can't give you a specific example of like walking out going i can't believe this <laughs> yeah yeah no no i always uh, ask people because it's like do you sit in the back of the theater with like the trench coat and the hat on and you're like <laughs> viewing yourself because i talked to some directors and they love they would do that the first night they would go sit in the back and then try not like you're going to know, Oh, the, Oh, I know the guy that directed this by his look. It's not like there was IMDB back then, but they would watch. And then that's how they would get a feel of, Hey, I did a good job or, or not, not a good job. They're laughing at the parts. I wanted them laugh at maybe like do the fist pump at the parts that I wanted that to evoke that emotion. But, uh, and the other side, it's gotta be sometimes hard to watch yourself afterwards. You know, well, that, that was, that was kind of nice because, uh, uh, the people that, that uh, I, I had worked for in, in a lot of the cases, they would call me and say, dude, we did a, a screening last night. And they would go through the film, you know, bit by going, this, you know, this, this is working on the audiences. So I was already, you know, pumped when I saw it. But yeah, I would hide near the back. <laughs> yeah, nonchalantly, not a trench coat, but, uh, but uh, you know, I, I would make sure that uh, when the film was over, I was out of there real quick. Yeah, <laughs> across the lobby, you know. Yeah, I know you worked obviously for you know at a bunch of different studios over the years, but one that always sticks out because I grew up watching a lot of the Canon films. You're in Undercover, which is a Canon movie. Yeah. What was uh, it lurk, working like for that studio versus? Because I know obviously they cut corners. Because yeah. you mentioned it before, like digital nowadays, a kid can go out or anybody can go out and use a, yeah. a cell phone or buy a digital camera, but Back then, it was like, you know, we only have so much a feet of film that we could afford for this project. And I know Canon was 90 minutes or under. That was like their rule of thumb. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> I didn't uh, actually, I didn't, I don't even know that, uh, I, I was unaware they ever had a studio. <laughs> they know they, they didn't. Just, they no, just no. stamped their name on the, on the uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. the film and said, it's a Canon film, damn it. We have money in this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a uh, that was a film that was a uh, I I don't remember doing anything outside the state of uh, uh, Louisiana or Mississippi in the dead of summer. You were talking about the humidity uh, earlier. <laughs> uh, some of it was shot on a Mississippi game refuge that bordered Louisiana. There was no. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you got to go down to Bourbon Street and uh, get a. <laughs> A blah blah blah, and have a blah blah blah. You know, there was none of that. You know, after I had done all none this of of research and called everybody I knew in the world that had ever been to uh, to New Orleans, and then the only the only thing of New Orleans, only time I I saw New Orleans was from a speeding van. And the rest of it was just <laughs> pure hell. Uh, horse flies that can bite you through a uh, a shooter's vest and a t-shirt and still pierce your skin. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, I it was it was just like, uh, well, what next? You know, snakes, baiters. <laughs> Get me out of here. Yeah, and, and, there, and I there always were... try to watch a bunch of different uh, films that people work on, and I always try to pick one that's like not, one that I've never heard of. And I watched a little bit of one last night that you know how they always say like 
like some movies get like the same plot gets regurgitated every decade or so they'll try to make the same thing i don't think anybody's ever going to remake easy wheels oh the, I don't the plot of easy wheels <laughs> is the craziest thing i've ever read that's why i had to watch it last night as i read the plot to it and i'm like oh my god a girl <laughs> biker gang kidnapping babies <laughs> um yeah, uh, that that was uh, it, it, maybe the strangest plot line uh, of any film that I did. I I was, it, but but the people involved, you would have thought, oh, yeah, uh, Barry Barry yeah, Livingston, I mean, which must have been cool. I'm sure you grew up watching My Three Sons, and oh yeah, it, 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 you know, it just it just I don't think it just I don't think it ever had enough money behind it, um, and. Uh, But it, it was crazy. It, it was absolutely nuts. I, I, um, uh, you know, some some of the people that that worked behind the scenes or whatever would just keep me in stitches. They weren't even on camera. Um, so we were out out in the middle of uh, the Mojave Desert, the high desert, you know, and they they found an old test track <clears throat> that uh, one of the major automobile uh, companies had out there, and they thought, well, this is where the, the battle's going to be, the final battle. All tall hills and valleys, and it was all just dirt and desert or whatever. And uh, they uh, <laughs> they decided they were going to have a, a gigantic explosion. And uh, <laughs> I don't know about this uh, special effects team, <laughs> but I and I, I don't know about, but but now and then you run into a special effects team, and uh, there's one guy with a hook, and another guy with an iPad, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, they they took they brought in a, a 55 gallon drum of high test and floated a bag of black powder on top of it, oh and uh, yeah, and we. We rode our bikes out. We, we got up on top of this hill. They're going, no, no, no. You don't understand. You need to go on top of the big hill. The big <laughs> hill. Okay. We're not going to be able to see anything, you know, because the, the uh, you know, the, the, the can of uh, gas or whatever, the barrel was like that big in your field of vision. But when they let that sun <laughs> bridge off, I mean, it just went. Shoo! It's like, oh, radiation poisoning. <laughs> Um, and it, it made this this gigantic smoke ring that floated toward Lancaster and Palmdale. It was just a perfect, wow. perfect giant smoke ring, and it just went on forever until it finally dissipated. Uh, it was just weird stuff that happened on that film. Uh, you knew how to ride prior to it. Like, did you ride a oh, motorcycle, or did they train not you? Not really. No, I I had uh, I I bought a motorcycle. They only bought a motorcycle I bought. Outside of you know just riding friends' motorcycles uh, down the block and back and mini bikes and stuff like that, um, I, I bought a bike uh, for the desert. I had m moved out into the Mojave Desert, and I took it uh, to a uh, a bike shop uh, and dealership in uh, in Rosalind, California, and uh, I, I kept calling to find out about it. And finally, I went, oh, damn it, I'm going to go down there and see what happened. And it was gone. Everything was gone. Oh. Everything was gone. Oh, my God. And so that was my, that was my biker career uh, out, <laughs> outside that film. But, yeah, these bikes were just, like, messed up. They were, you know. Uh, but uh, amazingly, you know, they, they weren't broken down, and, and we didn't kill each other riding them. Yeah, that's good. I don't know how many legitimate riders there were, but uh, <laughs> somehow we survived. You did. You did. But it, you know what? I just, it, yeah. It, I, that's, it, that's a real, real sleeper. But, but that could be something uh, with uh, alcohol and, 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 and herb or whatever uh, at, at a party. Uh, that, that could just be a, one funny little, you know, picture. To, to view and, and go, my God, what did we just watch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know. I love the. I, I watch half of it, and the best was uh, Barry as the reporter, and he's taking the notes when they're asking the the man after his house looked like 
got blown up by the girls and they took the kid and he's like getting the uh, getting the woman's statement and the woman stops and she starts like it's like she's catatonic she keeps repeating like gut 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 and she's trying to say it was girls that were the bikers but he's writing down gut 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 yeah. the lady stops talking but uh yeah, interesting, man. Just it's those movies are fun, like you said. You watch the movie, have a couple of beers, and you're just watching. Like I don't know where Paul Labart, the main character, has like a god power because he's able to lift the. I don't know where and music plays like oh yeah. He got a piece of shrapnel in his in his uh, brain from Nam that gave him his uh, powers somehow. Yeah, yeah but some uh, positive spin. Uh, to Nam that the, the writer wanted to get across. See, Nam wasn't that bad. He got superpowers from that. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy. Yeah. Way. Real really nice guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just a genuinely uh honest uh, uh truthful gentleman. Uh I uh it, it would, he was a good role model for me just uh you know, be, just being with him. <clears throat> That's good. No, it's good when you're on set and you have the person that's like uh, top build or when they when they're following and being like one of the guys or, you know, one of the one of the castmates and not like isolating themselves. I'm sure that makes it a, a more enjoyable filming process. Yeah. And, uh, you know, act, every actor's different and they have different. Yeah. Needs or, or whether they are imagined or real. Yeah. Um, and you know, some of them might come off like, "Well, he has to have this kind of water." Well, you know, um, when you you get up in the A films or whatever, these people are race horses. It's like, nah, just give them some straw. No, 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 no. You don't understand. It's special alfalfa hay for the race horse. <laughs> get him his water, <laughs> damn it. You know. Yes. So, uh, you know, it's 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 not much to ask as long as you say, yeah, please. <laughs> Yes. No, you got to do that. <laughs> so, so another movie that I, I'm sure while you're filming it or when you land the role, you don't know what it's going to become uh, is Leprechaun. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I actually, I knew Mark and I had done an episode of Superboy. Uh, and, oh, okay. uh, and so I, I knew him from that and I knew, I knew his writing from that somewhat. Um, and uh, and I liked him, and and I liked the idea. So so when he uh, when he cast it, he 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 you know kept his word, and then all of a sudden, hey, you know, you need to go in and read for this movie. Oh, oh yeah, cool, yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was one of my favorite films to do, uh, yeah. just just because of of the camaraderie. Um, the uh, the cast we we were like a little family or whatever, uh, you know. Work was work was always caught in the makeup chair, so uh, <clears throat> spent spent all, most of his time in, in the makeup chair, uh, you know, like uh, in in makeup hell. And then the, the rest <laughs> of us were pretty much together the rest of the time, uh, and uh, and so we would we would pull these twelve and eighteen hour days, you know, to where you're just getting giddy. Uh, but, uh, th just the laughter that went on in between takes, uh, <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> so much fun. And, and, and Jennifer, I'm going, my God, this kid, she looks like she's 14 and this stuff is coming out of her mouth that where it's just, you know, brilliant comedy, uh, never complains, not too many hours, never, uh, you know, never, never shows weakness. She's always on, on the money. And I thought, you know what, this, you, I, I said, Jennifer, I don't know what's going to happen with you. This is your first film. I said, something big is going to happen. Something like, I don't know, um, Saturday night live. And, uh, and of course what, what came to be was much bigger and better yeah. and, and, you know, and beyond, I'm sure what, I imagined or, or what she imagined at the time. Uh, and, and she's still going. Yeah. She's yeah. even bigger. Like, you know, she, even during that, the times on friends, she was like doing movies here and there, but now she's huge. Still yeah. doing it. Yeah. Where um, was that? Was that filmed in Cali in California or was it on location somewhere in the States? Uh, it was, 
<clears throat> it was filmed um, at uh, in, in the same location as in the Simi Valley, uh, uh, where they they filmed uh, um, oh the Michael Landon uh, family. Oh, it was out there, really. Uh, yeah. The uh, yeah. Little House on the Prairie. It was out in that studio. That's yeah, Little House on used? the Prairie. It was. It was. It wasn't uh, at that studio. The studio the interiors of the studio. I can't tell you where those were. There weren't that many of them. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we did was in the house. Uh, uh, so uh, and uh, and as I remember, there was a a basement in the house. So. <clears throat> We got a lot done in that little area uh, and, uh, you know, shooting night and day. And uh, so it was it was uh, it was an experience and they're all different. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, and then um, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and then like, again, like when you're filming a movie, you're having fun, the camaraderie, you guys having a lot, Mm -hmm. but then you never know what's going to be the end product. And you never know. It's going to be like this huge horror franchise that's going to have, I don't know, six or seven sequels. And then they had the direct sequel in, you know, 2018, which it's just so crazy when you work on a movie, you never know how people are going to perceive it. Cause it's not like when you're doing dinner theater, you do dinner theater you see the reaction after a line or after a scene, but with a movie, you, you never know until it's actually out there. Right. Um, well, it, it, it's, it's, it still blows my mind. You know, they, they, uh, they, they did the first one and, and they decided to break the formula and, and do Leprechaun in space and the hood here oh, and there, yeah. <laughs> Leprechaun yeah. around the corner, le- Leprechaun <laughs> the table, whatever those things were. And I tried watching some of them and some of them had some, had some funny parts of whatever, but I don't think I've ever seen part two through part seven all the way through. Uh, yeah. And uh, when I did part eight, uh, which is titled Leprechaun Returns, um, I played the same character, same, a continuation of the same storyline 25, 30 years later. So, uh, <clears throat> that one we filmed in, um, uh, South Africa near Cape town. So that was, that was a, a trip. You know? And exact, literally. And, uh, <laughs> no, but it's like, I talked to Lyndon and he was telling me how like the exact replica of the house. And then how, cool was when they blew it up but it was cool that they did a direct sequel and it was like a neat story even hearing jennifer spoiler alert like hearing a Gen- jennifer's sort of voice in the movie that it was her daughter in it i thought it was a really neat movie and again for a character i put it up in the realm of like freddy krueger it's really hard to play a horror slasher that speaks and Lyndon knocked it out of the park oh yeah um, and he had he had really no no credits whatsoever. I, I mean, very little. So he stepped yeah. into that role, and and here's this guy that I don't know how many sets he had been on, but now he is playing the title role, undergoing <clears throat> tons of makeup every day, uh, tons of touch ups on the makeup all through the day, and um, he was just. Uh, he, he just rose to the occasion and, and knocked it out. I, I can't uh, think of anybody uh, better to, uh, re, you know, uh, besides going back to, to Warwick, but Warwick had, yeah. had enough of that, you know. He, he went through, uh, you know, seven movies of hell with the makeup. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, you know, it's like, I don't blame him a, a bit, man, having to sit in that makeup chair. And, and when he started, it was like using spirit gum, which is toxic as hell. Um, so after seven, I'm sure he just said, that's it. You know, I, I got some yeah. money in the bank. I don't have to do any more. You guys go right on without me. And have yeah. Fun. <laughs> so. yeah. Lyndon said how crazy it was because in that, within a year before he landed that role, he played like, he had like a one quick scene of playing a, like a body double in, one of the Chucky sequels. I think it was like cult of Chucky or something. So he was like, it's so crazy. I'm playing this part that I don't even know when I watch the movie, 
which part's me because I filmed so many different ones, and then I'm 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 playing oh, the back, leprechaun. We're back to Lyndon at this point, right? That's what I was mentioning. Yeah, I was just talking about okay, Lyndon. Okay, got, how yeah. you're saying like he had no credits yeah. before that, which was yeah. crazy for him to play like a extra in the, in the Chucky movie, and then within yeah. the year he lands that title role. That was, that was huge for him. He loved it. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and that's a life experience. Uh, I, I had never had uh, the luxury of, of traveling to uh, anywhere on the continent of Africa, um, uh, much less you know Cape Town. And uh, that was just like you're gonna you're gonna shoot this where in Africa, South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa. <laughs> So I, I get on my computer and I'm Googling uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And the first thing that popped up, it was like eight years old, but but I, I didn't realize it when I looked at it. It said Cape Town, murder capital of South Africa. <laughs> and I, well, I I don't know about this, you know. Yeah, and I started asking questions about the security, and I went back and found the article, and and I was oh my god, well that's years old. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. We uh, we have all these actors, you know, and they're naming off all these big, you know, black actors or whatever. They've been here and they've never had any trouble. Our security team, blah, 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 blah. And I said, yeah, but there's one thing that I have that they didn't. I, I look like a fat farmer boar, you know, and, and one of the political parties of the top three political parties their, their little uh, song was Kill the Boar. So, <laughs> oh, my God. I went, ah, no problem. You know, they are probably just kidding. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it was trippy. It, it, uh, I had a, a little, uh, you know, I kept, kept being reassured that everything was cool, and everything was cool. Um, and it was, a, it was just a, a different, you know, experience and uh, people kind of wonder i wonder what ostrich tastes like i wonder what wildebeest tastes like you know what i'd like to eat a zebra don't know why i just always have wanted to eat a zebra you know shit like that and um and then you get there and you're going ah it tastes like beef you know uh, yeah <laughs> next next wild animal it tastes like beef too um uh, ostrich i kind of tastes like beef so, and I don't know, I don't know why that is. I mean, nothing tasted exotic, wild, you know, but, uh, but it was kind of neat. That, oh yeah, I've, I've, I've had ostrich. Pretty good. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're at a zoo and like with little yeah. kids around me like, Hey, did you ever eat one of those? I did. Aren't those, aren't those beautiful ostriches? They're delicious. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> Mark, you have so many credits on here. Obviously, we're not going to cover all of them. But one I think is like, it's like when uh, my, my wife's a teacher and she teaches kids uh, and she teaches me when I was going back to school. Uh, like the best thing when you're doing multiple choice, like one of these things is not like the other. And that's usually the answer. So like Gacy, was that a role that you sought out that, that you sought out to play? Or because that's obviously very different than a lot of the characters you played in your career. No, I, I had no idea they were doing the movie. I was just called into casting, like the rest of the. Wow. You know, and uh, <clears throat> now I had worked for the casting director. I had been cast by the casting director, but I, I had no idea who the, any of the rest of the satellite people were, including the director. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I thought, you know what? I, I, um, I probably ought to do this. Um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, uh, at, at the time I, I weighed a, a third more than I do now. I'm, I'm a big, you know, I'm a character actor. What are the chances that I will ever have a, uh, a title role, a lead role in a film? And, uh, the film wasn't bad and I was familiar with the story. So, um, you know, I, I did it and, uh, I just, uh, you know, I have, have always had, a, you know, I, I've always hoped that, that people don't look at it uh, as a, uh, as a document, a documentary, but a how-to manual, uh, because yeah, there's, yeah. there's some yeah. really nutty people out there, and, and uh, now and then I'll run into one of them, and uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, 
uncomfortable when that happens. So yeah, is it hard? Was it hard to play a character like that too? Like when you're doing your research and like reading the script of because you're playing something that yeah that happened. Yeah, well, it, it's something that that uh, was was part. Uh, I see. I'm old enough to where that was part of the evening news. It's part of the local yeah. news. Part of a national news. It was, it was uh, part of the newspapers. It was part of uh, a magazine print, like Time, Newsweek, or whatever. So you were constantly, oh my God, they found another body. Now they found another body, and you're going, oh wow, wow, this guy. My God, how many is that now? You know. So so as the, as the story's playing out in real time, I was, you know, keeping up with it. So uh, you know, by the time. <clears throat> By the time they zapped the old son of a bitch, uh, you know, I, I pretty much had a good idea who he was, and, uh, yeah. and I didn't have I didn't have the luxury of, of you know, like, oh, okay, I want to stand here where he was born. It's just uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know. Yeah, some of those method when it comes to playing roles like that. Like I talked to an actress. Not this isn't about like a method she did. But she was like in a Casey Anthony movie. She played Casey Anthony. And she was like, it was hard enough to do that. But then the baby they cast looked just like the baby. And she was like, that like messed me up on set. So it's got to be hard playing something that's real. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to, you, you're, uh, you're pretty much immersed into darkness uh, from, from the moment you get up and start looking over your lines, having that first cup of coffee until. Uh, you're uh, tucking your little boys in bed at night, and uh, you know on the way home you, you just you just want to scrub your mind out with a, a toilet brush uh, yeah. before you get home. Is <clears throat> the only way I can describe it. But um, yeah, it was uh, you know there were there were days that we're okay. Here we go. Take a deep breath, you know, and um, and and there was a lot of anxiety too uh, because the uh, the director and I had some differences or whatever. It's, it's all, you know, let's not go there. It's, it's all water into the bridge. Yeah. But, uh, but that made it more difficult. And, um, but you know what the saddest thing about that is, Doug? What? Is, is that somehow <laughs> that film got tied up in the legal system in 2009. You know, really? I, you know, you know, when I got my last... Residual check from Gacy. Oh, 2009. No, 2009. <laughs> really? What's it tied yeah. up with? Like the studio or something? Uh, or well, yeah, you uh, you go through a Screen Actors Guild. They're going well. It's it's uh, it's in a, a a battle or whatever. It's going to court. Well, when? Who? who what, what's it over? Well, this is a, this is a second action. Okay, so I'm being represented by the Screen Actors Guild attorneys that are. Uh, you know, fighting it out, or they're just waiting back, and you know, it's it's between the attorneys that where the the, the ownership or whatever the difference of opinion is. Um, uh, so you know, it's just like, well, we we don't know, we can't tell you that. You can't tell oh, me wow. that, or you're not telling me that. Uh, <laughs> so, but you know, it's it, it's believable. Um, all all they can do is tell me what they can tell me, and uh, yeah, and it's one of those things that we're. Yeah. Um, do I wish that that hadn't happened? Sure. But, you know, if it if it shows up, it shows up. But, you know, it hadn't made it hadn't really put a dent in my life. I, I don't, yeah. I'm not, you know. I've got all these horrible first world problems to deal with besides that. You know, yeah. Like what's for dinner? That's a good outlook on life. Yeah, that's a yeah. good outlook. Uh, yeah, outlook on uh, life. This has been so much fun. I At the end, I always like to ask these three questions. Uh, I know it's so hard to like pick one, but do you have like a favorite role that you got to play over the years? Like if there was like, so, well, now there is aliens. We, we sort of know that, I guess. Right. But like, if there's like in the ethos, if it was like Mark Holton's one role that you could uh, have like stamped next to your name, like when people go in the baseball of fame, some guys pick like one cap from all the teams they were on. Is there a role of yours that you would want like best represents like your work that you enjoy doing? Well, I, I almost always say uh, a league of their own, just just because of, of the experience yeah. and what what happened, and the fact that it was outside um, 
coming. But uh, the reality, <clears throat> whether I like it or not, the film I will be remembered for is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. You know, and everything else was is, you know, a, a satellite pick around that film uh, as far as I go. So, yeah. So you mentioned, so League of Their Own, that line wasn't in the script? See, again. You're just saying it's out. No, you said a league of their own. Uh, you're known for a line outside of the copy. So, is there an ad no, 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 line no, in the movie? I, I know, oh, I'm, known okay. for, I'm known for um, for comedy, not. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. But but not a, you know legitimate um, uh, you know a real person so to so to speak like uh, my character in that or like Gacy. Um, uh, it's it's you know it's it, it's it's uh, you know very broad comedic characters like like francis buxton yeah uh, or chubb <laughs> um yeah or ozzy so it was it was just a nice time you know and and it, it just the, the that film a league of their own was was just uh 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 hold so many memories um just 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 to have the approval just to have a credit uh, uh, from uh, from that director, uh, Penny Marshall. That's that's you know, yeah. That's very satisfying to me. I'm proud. Yeah, I'm, of that. I'm not proud. Phenomenal of cast. You know, I'm yeah. not. I'm not proud of a lot of my work, but I'm proud of that. So that's good. And another question I love asking people: So when you were on sets over the years, did you ever keep any mementos? Did you keep any like costumes or scripts or? Oh, <laughs> what do oh, you got? Boy. Yeah, I, I, everybody that's a collector is going. What's gonna be? <gasps> it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Keep, I, I didn't keep that much stuff. I have a few things. I have. I have some scripts. Uh, I have cool. a few items. Um, I it just hit me the other day. Um, it, it, in two different photographs I was looking at, uh, getting ready to order some photographs, uh, stills from uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure and then from League of the, uh, or, or Naked Gun. And in both films, I had on a ring, a ruby ring that, uh, that I still have. And I thought, well, you know what? That, that ring has been in, you know, it's, it, it's, it's proper, you know, the shot yeah. you know, in, the, in the still where... You'll be sorry, Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I don't know if it's on that hand, but it's 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 definitely uh, part of uh, uh, Francis Buxton's uh, uniform. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but so I'm sure there's things like that. I, I also um, I uh, my my son had never seen the episode that I did of uh, Seinfeld. Oh, nice. And I, I watched I'm that last night a, with my wife. I, I love that episode. Yeah, I, I was wearing a, a nice leather overcoat. And uh, and my son goes, Dad, that's your, that's your real coat, isn't it? And I went, <laughs> yeah, whatever. <Well, anyway, laughs> that's something else to, you know, throw it on eBay. When I'm dead, throw that son of a bitch on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the coat he wore. When he ordered the chocolate, when he got the chocolate babka, he didn't have yeah. to settle for the yeah. cinnamon babka. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the, the eBay traffic take care of itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's so weird when you're in a movie, like you never know. It's like uh, that old saying that you never know, like the last time. And sometimes you get emotional. I think about this. You never know the last time you're going to like, play hide and go seek or manhunt as we yeah. call it in New Jersey with your friends. Like you never know the last time you're going to do that. Pick up a uh, baseball game in the field. Cause you never know. You grow old. You never know in the moment. What will be the last, even like on a movie yeah. set, I couldn't imagine. There's so much you're thinking about. Remember your lines. You're not thinking like, Hey, should I keep that? Uh, you know, that beavers Jersey or should I keep, you know, my boxing gloves from team wolf too. You, you just never know, you know, what to do when it comes to, Keeping mementos, I bet, or even scripts. Like, how many scripts can you keep? Well, <clears throat> my mind was was more toward, uh, you know, I, I knew that uh, 
a lot of the films that I did back then, uh, the uh, wardrobe department would get free shoes from Nike, uh, Adidas. <clears throat> I didn't have to buy shoes for years. So oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think from Teen Wolf 2, I got a, a pair of Kazal sunglasses, which were the sunglasses at the time. <laughs> the and uh, is nice. I'm going, oh, God, I'm, you know, I'm, I, 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 sunglasses with me last about 30 minutes and I wore them into a bar and uh, the bartender had on a pair of Kazals, but they were prescription. And she goes, we have the same glasses. And I said, well, really? And I had them off laying on the bar. I said, I said, you know, those would look really good with the prescription lenses in it. She goes, can I try those on? I said, yeah. And she tried them on and I bartered it into a, um, Oysters on the half shell and gin and tonics, and, <laughs> you know, for like two or three trips here. It's like, I didn't realize how expensive they were, but she's going, I tell you what I'll do. And I went, let's do it. Bring the raw oysters and mix my drink, yeah. baby. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> on your new class. So, yeah, congratulations on that. I mean, that, they were no, that's awesome. far more... <laughs> far more valuable at, at that bar at that date and time than they would be now. You know? Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And then, uh, so I always ask, obviously this is something that you always wanted to do, but was there any other careers you thought of before you got into acting like teacher? I know usually at a young age, it's something you, you want to do, but was there any other careers you had in mind? Um, <clears throat> I, I think I would have have liked to had have the, the luxury of, uh, of of trading stocks to where I had had some you know more more knowledge or whatever because when you you start doing it you know it's just like just like anything else you know you, you can't just hop on a bicycle you're gonna fall over a few times and um, yeah. and so the education that I got uh, was uh, by doing and you, you know, you have, you get to the point to where, you know, this is paying for itself, but you know, it's, I've, I've got too much ahead of me and, and too many obligations to keep putting it on the line and risking it. So I, I stopped doing that. I enjoyed doing it. Um, not that much or whatever, but I, I think, uh, the other thing I would have liked to have done is to go to gunsmithing school and specialize really? in uh, the 1911A1. Yeah. I, um, wow. I don't, I don't hunt and kill animals. Uh, but, uh, you know, to me, it's, it's just like, uh, you know, putting a ball through a hoop or hitting a glove. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's just, uh, or, or throwing a javelin. They're, they're all related or, or martial arts, you know, the uh, pistol, uh, pistol craft uh, is, by definition, a martial martial art. So, you have so many yeah. things there um, that are you know, coming together, like physics and uh, metallurgy and history. Uh, it just um, I have a, a condition or whatever that stopped me from from going ahead with with you know doing that little by little or whatever. But uh, yeah, but that's the only other other two things I can think of. Um, and uh, yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, this has been so much fun. I know you could tell me, you could say, Doug, take a walk off a short pier. But like the one thing I've always wanted to ask somebody that especially worked with Team Wolf, to, with Team Wolf, uh, I don't know if I asked Troy because I don't think Troy would have been. Oh, I guess he would have been on set for that final scene. But that whole ending scene where it looks like somebody has their pants off. Do you know what I'm talking um. about? Yeah, I, I, I don't. Is there I don't, any truth to that or anything? Yeah, like that? I, had never, I had never heard that until recently, and I looked at it and I went, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, it just, it just, I, I don't buy that it was intentional. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's, there, one thing was that yeah. it was obviously a guy doing that, but then another yeah. thing I, somebody, I, I read somewhere was that it was actually a girl, and I'm like, I have no idea because you can only see the, like, from like sort of like the <laughs> midsection down. Of the it's, shot, yeah. it's just somebody you know. I've, I've had I've had pants where you know you sit down and the zipper goes down by itself. You go, oh, yeah. Oh, know. I've had that happen. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and also, uh, you feed uh, an extra lunch, a really 
good big lunch. And the guy might have just gone, <laughs> God, man, I am stuffed. And, you know, unzipped his pants and uh, forgot about it. And then, okay, everybody, uh, this time we're going to hop up and down and cheer. All right, you guys ready? <laughs> uh, it it could have been that, but but I don't know. It's It's just, it's silly. Stop asking about yeah. that. And I will stop talking about it. But only yeah, stop yeah, asking yeah. about it. I won't. I, I will stop <laughs> asking about it. No, that's yeah. happened to me. My wife's like, "Hey, dog, come on. <laughs> what are you, What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Oh man." Yeah. But uh, Mar- Mark, this has been awesome. It's so cool. And then everybody, uh, you know, you're going to be in Parsippany, New Jersey, and it's at the world's greatest oldies party, and it's August 31st and September 3rd. Are you going to be there all the days? I'm going to be there Friday and Saturday. I'm I'm coming cool. in to scope things out on uh, Thursday. And then I will be, uh, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm walking into a, an unknown or whatever. I assume there will be a table. Uh, supposedly there's, there's going to be a screening of a film. Um, oh, a mayor one of may your not films, have really? access to a, a, a peewee bike replica for, for photo ops. That's, that's still uh, in the works. But uh, the, the, the whole reason they have never in the 40 years that, that they've done this had, um, they have gradually tried to, to move uh, in a family-oriented, family-friendly direction because everybody that loves muscle cars or automobiles or whatever, they have families, you know, with yeah. children. So um, they want to make sure that, that the spouse and the children have a good time. So they're going to have uh, theaters inside and outside for like a, a, a drive-in night. Uh, it, one of the things I, I've heard mentioned. And then just, you know, the cars. I, I just look at the past winners on that site and I'm going, oh. uh, I mean, how could you even touch something like that, much less get in? And, you know, how would you feel <laughs> when the enough. first bug hit the windshield? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of car collectors by me. I'm not too far. I'm like 40 minutes from Parsippany, but every day there's this like little roadside, uh, like barbecue place. And every day there's 10 cars, uh-huh. people in their, you know, eighties. And they're just all sitting there like in the lawn chairs talking about their cars. So now I'm excited. Yeah. It'll be really cool. I, I think you'll like it. Uh, if you can find a parking place, no, <laughs> no come, on. come on, see me. I'll, uh, I'll fix you up. No, I will. Totally. Right, man. Yeah, I'll bring the kids. My my daughter loves uh she loves going to things like that. So yeah, I appreciate I'm happy we finally connected, Mark. This is uh pretty special. So I'm happy I was able to talk to you. And yeah, keep in touch and then uh yeah, I'll see you uh at the end of the month, early September. Yes. In just a few days. In just a few days. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks again. Thank you, Doug. I enjoyed it, buddy. Appreciate it.